Today's the day. It's the day for chords. We are going to start chords and talk about them thoroughly. So you'll need your blank melodic notation paper so that you can write your own version. You gotta be able to write these by Friday. And you need your PDF file, which is called How to Write Chords. So on your stream right below where the week five daily calendar will be, keep on scrolling and you'll see worksheets for week five. Now that your class uh, classroom is all updated. First, we're gonna do some rhythms and review those. So this is called Rhythm Reading 4. And it's just eight measures total with some rests thrown in here and there. In measure one, we have a quarter rest. So we're not gonna say the number two because that falls on beat two. In measure two, we have a whole rest. We know that it's a whole rest because, woo, because it sits below the line. So it looks like a hole in the ground. So that's just gonna be four beats of silence. In measure three, we have a half note followed by a rest on beat three. So this quarter note would actually be beat four. So this would be the one and two, this would be the three, and this would be the four. In the fourth measure, we have a half rest that is going to be silent beat one and silent beat two, making this beat three and four after it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and jump in. These eighth rests could easily be combined into a quarter rest on beat four. I just wanted to try and make that look really tricky. So that's as crazy as the second line gets. All right, so we're gonna go through this together and then I'll count you in after we get our labels added. So beat one, nothing on beat two. We're not even gonna wanna write the label because it will say in your instructions, do not label the rests. Nothing at all needed for measure two. We just have to make sure that we wait four beats. Stop, 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 website. All right. I, lovely percussion sound here. This is gonna be beats one and two, but because it's a long note, we hold the first number that the note starts on. So we're gonna say one, here's our silent three, and here's our four. One and two are nothing, three, four. One and two and nothing, nothing. One, holding that whole note for a whole measure. A silent, I'll put in parentheses, a silent beat one, a silent beat two, a really normal beat three. And this would have been the four and. So I'll leave those there. If you wanna put the rests labeled in parentheses, you totally can. Beat one, beat two, nothing. Beat three, beat four, nothing. Here we go, from the top. No, we don't wanna change our time signature. From the beginning. One, two, ready, and speak. One, three, and four. One, four. Three, four, one and two and one, three, one, three. We made it! You can watch that again if you would like. You can pause here if you want to take more detail of this rhythm reading number four. Um, now that we've really upped to the level of difficulty as far as what the rests can look like, nice job. We're working with eighth rests and quarter rests and half rests and whole rests. So we have a lot happening here. So if you feel like you could have labeled this one on your own, you're in good shape for next week and for the future. How to write chords. There's a lot on this paper. I'm gonna go ahead and talk you through it. And then you'll need this to create your own. If you don't have either of these printed out, that's okay. Just make yourself a blank piece of paper 
and be sure to have five lines on it because we're going to need them. How to write major chords. Um, we're going to focus on some major chords right now and then we'll show you all of them. Chords can be built on any solfege syllable. Let's look at our solfege syllables in order. Here they are on our scale. Keep in mind that these syllables repeat to infinity. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti. You got it. So our first syllable is number one. I'm um, sorry, our first syllable is do. Our second pitch is re. Our third note in the scale is called mi. Our fourth syllable is fa. Our fifth note is what we call so. La is sixth and T is seventh. So they're always going to be in that order. We label chords using the number of the first pitch. We write these numbers using Roman numerals so that we can have capital numbers and lowercase numbers. That sounds weird, but you're about to see it. Don't worry. When we start to write chords, we skip neighbor tones until we reach a total of three pitches. So this is says, let's write the five chord. So we're going to start on so. Pause, double check, is this really so? Do, re, mi, fa, so. We're going to count it again. Do, re, mi, fa, so. All right, so it's our fifth note in the scale. It's on the second line from the bottom. All right, so this is so. It's our fifth note, which means that when we label a full chord, it's going to be our five chord. Check out this sentence. Ooh, how do I highlight just this? Let's write the five chord. I automatically translated this into let's write the five chord because I know my Roman numerals. They're on the bottom of this page. So we start with the first pitch. When we start the five chord, we find our fifth solfege syllable and we write it down. And we have to have a skip and a skip. The note that is in this space would sound horrible because the notes are too close together to sound good. And I'm gonna play that for you once we get to the website. So we will skip to the next line and we'll add another one with a skip to the next line. So if the first pitch is on a line, all of the notes in the chord are also going to be on lines. That's how you know you did the skips correctly. And here's all of our chords. You can see above that the reason we are using the one, the four, and the five chord is because they are the major or happy sounding chords that exist in this key. This is true for all major scales. So our one chord starts on Do with our ledger line here, and it has a skip to the next line and a skip to the next line. One, two, three, four. Our four chord starts on our fourth solfege syllable, Do, Re, Mi, Fa. It uses Fa with a skip to the next line and a skip to the next line. So in reality, that's Fa skip so, use la, skip t, and use do. Let's go ahead and see what I mean by that. So you need this paper. I have just blank paper here. First thing I'm going to do is write our solfege in order. Do is number one. Re Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, and Do again. So we've seen these as a scale. We start our scale on Do, and we just walk our way up with quarter notes. Now if we take Do and we build the wrong distance 
by using its immediate friend, Ray, we're going to get what we call a neighbor tone. You can see that they're next to each other on the musical keyboard. Do and Ray together, the neighbor tones, they sound terrible. They clash. It's the beginning of the song Chopsticks. Neighbor tones never sound beautiful because there's not enough distance between the pitches for us to get a sense of beautiful harmony. So if you are using Do, you will not want to use Re in your chord. We're going to scoot this up, make it a skip. Now we have Do and Mi, and they sound beautiful. Do, Mi. We're going to add our last pitch in this chord with another skip. We are not going to use Fa. We are going to use So. Do, Mi, So. Ooh, I didn't realize it would write those. Those are all in the chord at the same time. Beautiful. So you play it all with one hand on the piano. This is our one chord. It starts on Do. And it has a skip and a skip. Every single chord that we write is going to have that. Make sure that you write your one chord down right now because we're about to leave it and make our two chord. If our one chord starts right here on Do, our two chord starts right here on Re. I'm going to go ahead and add its label. I, I for two. We're using our Roman numerals here. Two starts on Re. We will not want to use Mi. We will want to use Fa. We will not want to use So. We will want to use La. So we have the first pitch and then we have a skip and a skip. Let's hear what would happen if we made all these neighbor tones and we made it horrible and it sounded terrible. Ooh, this has Re, Mi, Fa, So, and La. Oh, it's going to sound really bad. It just sounds like a mess. It doesn't sound like a chord. It sounds like crazy chaos. That's why we don't want any neighbor tones allowed. So we've used Re, we skipped Mi, we used Fa, we skipped So, and we used La. And that gives us our two chord. If the lowest note is on a, a space, every other pitch in the chord is going to be on a space. All right. Our one chord started on Do. Our two chord started on Re. Our three chord starts on me. I, I, I. That's our chord symbol. We have a skip and a skip. And if you're really handy with solfege, this is me. Use me. Skip fa. Use so. Skip la. And use t. There's our three chord. One, two, three, four. Let's write a four chord. I, V. Starts on Fa. Fa is in a space. Skip to the next space, which is La. Skip to the next, next space, which is Do. Let's write a five chord. All right, we have Do, Re, Mi, Our five chord is a big letter V and it starts on so. Make sure we skip and skip. This is so, T, and we're actually back to Re. Beautiful five chord. Let's walk up for our six chord. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La. We made it. Sixth chord is I. Ooh, I made a mistake. 
Sixth chord is VI. I always confuse those. It starts on LA, which is our number six. We're going to use LA. We're going to skip T. We're going to use DO. We're going to skip RE. We're going to use ME. So we have all of those at the same time. Let's add our seven chord, and we'll be back to a one chord very soon. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti. Seven chord, V, I, I. T, skip Do, use Re, skip Mi, and use Fa. And we're all the way up here on the top of the staff, on the top of the five lines. I'm going to create our one chord again. I'm going to actually create it down here, and then I'll just scoot it up. Back to one. Do. Do. Let's hear these. We don't need this extra measure, so I'm going to delete it. slow it down and hear it again. All right, let's change our tempo. Our tempo is going to become half speed. Let's make it really dramatically slow. One chord per second. So if you look at the lowest note in each chord, it's going to be Do for the one chord, Re for the two chord, Mi for the three chord, Fa for the four chord, So for the five chord, La for the six chord, T for the seven chord, and Do back to the one chord. This is a lot. Let me go ahead and highlight the ones that are asked for on Friday. chords 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now that means that you have to know your scale to accurately place the lowest pitch of each chord and then you just have a skip and a skip built into each chord. So if you cannot find DO for your one chord, you're in trouble. This is the week. This is the week to study this. If you know that your three chord starts on ME, because you went do, re, mi, three chord starts on mi, then you should be able to find that that is on your lowest line. And you can see that anytime you want by going back to this how to write chords page and double checking the location of your solfege. You don't need to know the solfege that are contained in each chord. For instance, oh, this is T and re, and fa. You don't need to know that. Don't worry. That's bonus. The chord symbols of the one chord, the two chord, the three chord, the four chord, the five chord, the six chord, and the seven chord are going to be given to you in order. So on Friday, write the one chord first, then the two chord will be to the side of it, then it'll ask you for a three chord, and then to the right of that, it'll ask you for the four chord, and then finally it will ask you for the five chord. So you're just writing basically what we've created here. So pause this and see this in detail. And on Friday, if you're feeling hesitant, come back and watch this Tuesday video again. This is week five, video two. How to write chords is a huge step. We've talked about so many small things. We reviewed our solfege and the order that it comes in. We've discussed that neighbor tones, which are solfege that are next to each other, they sound really bad together. They're not allowed to be in a chord together. That's why we have a skip and a skip. We've talked about how the chord symbols use Roman numerals and chords are labeled based on the number of their lowest note. This starts on so. 
do, re, mi, fa, so. We're going to call it a five, co five chord because that is our fifth solfege syllable. You are doing so many things simultaneously. Don't worry, we'll review on Thursday. Tomorrow, Franz Liszt is your composer, which means that our homework paper, or our class work paper rather, has a funny name because it's the list, listening classwork. Um, Franz Liszt is extremely important as the composers go, and he really made a world of difference. So dig into that PowerPoint, get some information from there, and I hope you enjoy listening to it. Again, chords on Thursday. Bye!